welcome yeah. back to the A to Z of horror. A good evening, boils and ghouls. It's, it's well been a done. while. It's been a while. It seems like it's been a long time since we last uh, recorded our <coughs> our special Christmas episode. I think it was. Although it was Krampus. Yeah, that was last time we did a video for you guys. Although and girls. it is before Christmas now. It, this will be our last recording before Christmas. It's twenty it? first today. Yeah. So yes. this will be our last. Uh, movie in the A to Z of horror oh. segment before Christmas. Mm. So today's movie is The Lost Boys. Oh, The Lost Boys. Oh, logical. And you already know that thumbnail. So this is a 1987 vampire flick. I've seen it once. Remember it to. I remember it being very good. It would be very good. Oh. Um. Yeah. I and this. I was quite reluctant about doing this film because I know really? this film really well. As yeah. in, this is. Uh, You're I'm, quote I'm, I'm wearing, for yeah, I'm wearing a, a problem. Uh, I remember a comic book scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Comic book shot scene with Corey Feldman. Anyway, so I'm gonna. I've got a, a huge amount of nostalgia for this movie. I've uh, seen it once, so, so I'm looking forward to rewatching. I, I'm concerned that I may give an overly positive review based Joel on Schumacher nostalgia. Directed but, this. Josh Schumacher, yeah, when he was good. But to help me think, think clear my mind for this tonight, I will be drinking. Bat's Blood. Tonight's video is sponsored by Bat's Blood. Bat's Blood. It's not actually sponsored anyway, but if anyone from Bat's Blood Winery is out there and would like to send me a free bottle, that's fine. Um, that yeah. that so this is actually from the only um, vineyard in Transylvania. This is a proper Transylvanian red wine. And it comes in a coffin. Ain't that cute? Now I'm going to try and find a way into it. <laughs> yeah, without completely damaging it. No. Nope. No, no, you've had it. Just no, it's not it. I think I'll just have a glass of water. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm in! Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck you, water. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some bat's blood. Oh. Right, so hopefully... It's not a screw top! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <coughs> right, we're gonna go watch The Lost Boys. Drink a bottle of bat's blood. Well, he is anyway. I'm driving. <sighs> Terrible. Anyway, we'll be back very soon. Has so anyone got a corkscrew? You're screwed now, aren't you, mate? It's screwed, get it? Right, <laughs> see you in a bit, mate. Hey, everyone, welcome back. So, we have just finished Lost Boys. Lost Boys. In fact, you can still hear some of the awesome soundtrack on in the background as <coughs> the credits roll. <coughs> Let's start with that. This is a 1987 movie which, which has a, a very, very, I suppose not typical, but a very 80s soundtrack. It's just great. This fucking soundtrack is amazing. All the way through the film, the, the the theme, the theme tune, if you want to call it, for something, you know, oh, the, the, the tune. yeah, oh, the uh, it's just uh, Lost so Boys. great. Lost Lost Boys. Is, yeah, is it called Lost Boys? I've, like I said, the second time I've ever oh, seen oh, this, oh, and that yeah. is a crime, crime. Mate, the second time. Don't let the sun go down on me. That's oh, right. I'll turn this down. <coughs> Uh, Walk This Way, that was in it. Yeah, um, yeah just seen coming up. Anyway. Uh, oh, it's great. Oh, it's a really good soundtrack. It's a really good soundtrack. I have this soundtrack on CD, which doesn't actually have Walk This Way on that soundtrack, but the soundtrack itself is still awesome. So, right. Uh, Synopsify really, the shit out of this. Do we Go. Synops? Right, a family, a mother, two sons, moved to Santa Carla, because she's just got divorced from a fella. Moves Murder, in with her dad. capital of the world. Moves in with a hippie dad. And he's ace, by the he's way. Badass. He's badass. He's long, your picture. ultimate uh, awesome dude. Uh, and he's so clever. The way that they wrote him and they played him yeah, was yeah, actually yeah. really clever. You don't realise what it's building to with him. But well, it's building to the last line. Yeah, the last line. The last line, the last line, line of the movie. Uh, and then <clears throat> there's the two brothers, one older, one younger. I, I don't know what ages they're meant to be. Because <laughs> you, you basically have the older brothers, which look like mid-40s or, or late-30s. And the younger ones, look like Corey Helm, who's fantastic in this, is like... The bad teenagers 40. in this film. The bad teenagers <coughs> in this film, including the surf Nazis, as they were the classified. Surf Nazis 1 to 5. They are, you know, I'm assuming they keep talking about they're going back to school, so you imagine it's the summer holidays, you know, so they've got to be, uh, you know, the, the oldest they can be What's is that, 18. Under 18, yeah. But they are literally, what, 29? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're older than us now. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, they go to uh, they go to the pier. The old the, the brothers go to the pier, and the oldest uh, clocks eyes with a young hottie. She is hot. She is hot, and her yeah, name yeah. is Star. Star. Hot name. That's a cool name. And then he uh, yeah wants to impress her, wants to get in the knickers and all that good stuff. <coughs> and all that good stuff. <laughs> all that good stuff. Which yep, okay. 
And then uh, they bump into the Lost Boys, the gang. It's got good legs on this. Yeah, you're enjoying that. Good you legs. Really polished the bottle off you have. Jesus. Waste that one up. <laughs> yeah, so then he's uh, tricked, I suppose. He's tricked the oldest brother. I forget his name now. What was his name? Michael. 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 Jason Patrick. What happened to Jason Patrick? <coughs> There's a lot of jokes kicked around around him about the 90s about how he was a bad actor, but he was in this, he was in lots of other films. Speed Sleep 2. Speed 2. That's what happened to Jason yeah, Patrick. Speed 2. <laughs> I was thinking Sleepers, that was a great problem. Yeah, Sleepers, yeah. Speed 2 happened to Jason Patrick. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what happens. <laughs> so then it really comes on that uh, Michael. Michael's Speed character. Speed 2 is awful. <laughs> I've only ever seen that crap once. It was Never really again. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I got a real back off for the moment. Right, anyway, so Michael then uh, he revolts. He doesn't want to become this vampire. And uh, now, his younger brother. Let's just pause even, there for one second, though. He doesn't want to become a vampire. And I think the tag is, I don't even know if it's on this case, but I remember the poster. It says, Sleep. Um, Sleep all day, party all night, never grow old. It's fun to be a vampire. I think I'd have been the vampire. They're awesome. They look fucking amazing. They look like Bon oh. Jovi fucked interview with vampires. Or something. They are so cool. You know, I, and I don't know if this it's is like my the right the idea rock of when vampire. I yes. I don't know if this is back to when I actually originally watched this, but if I could draw how I wish I looked <laughs> as a kid to an adult, I would be one of these vampires. I, and I know we, I took point at the exact one. I'd be vampire number two. This dude. This guy yeah, here. Him. That is in my head what I look like. <laughs> you know, leather really? jacket, long hair. We um, need to grow your hair then, dude. It, as he walks, he made, he's got like boots that make a ching noise. The yeah. guy's, he's, he's fucking ace. He's ace. Christmas I'm going to buy a leather jacket. I'm going to get one of the genuine sales. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah. Great cast in this. Kiefer Sutherland is like the main uh, vampire guy. Uh, Corey Haim. I haven't seen a lot of films with this guy. Guy, kid. He's an infamous kid actor, isn't he, from that age? Corey Hay? Yeah, and he Corey did. failed. Is he, he did. He did. Really? Yeah, he did. Oh, shit, man. Corey Hay. Yeah, Hayne thanks, for, thanks for. <laughs> I'm fucking depressed now. Kings man. Leon did a song about him. Did they? Whatever happened to Corey Hay? That's not how it goes, but they did the song. No. <laughs> Alright. Let me guess drugs. It was drugs indeed. Yeah. Drugs indeed. I don't know. Yeah, Corey Phil Feldman. Feldman, we're going to say. I do you know what I you... 80s films do though? <coughs> 80s films have this way of pulling in great casts where the ones that are almost the top headline bill character, you know, actors like Keith Sutherland and things like that, they're not the main parts. They're like the supporting cast. And a lot of 80s films do this. The supporting cast yeah, yeah, is yeah, really think. strong and carries the film yeah. through. And you don't get that very often these days Did anymore. I play Bill or Ted. Did he didn't even uh, say one line in that film. He did, he went, Mike, who, Michael? That's literally it. That was literally who, Michael? In the, who wants to know? Michael wants to was know. Was this before then, Bill and Ted? Or yes, it was before. Uh, uh, just okay. before. Uh, and he was um, Bill in Bill and Ted. Right. I can't remember his name. Alex, somebody over there. Great comedy in this film. Great 80s music. Great 80s scenery. You were talking about like, the, the 80s-ness of it. Is this over-exaggerated 80s, or was the 80s really like this? Because this was 87. <coughs> See, in 87, I was like <coughs> six or seven. You know, I, you know, I was not around, but this, this is heightened 80s from the, they had the, even that, the opening scene, which I loved it, not the opening scene, sorry, the, the opening music credits, if you like, it yeah, just comes yeah. after the, the prelogue. Um, I love that scene. I absolutely adore the way that's done. It shows you all the different characters around the boardwalk. Um, I think they heighten the 80s. You know, the, you've got every stereotypical 80s-ness in Shot this. Past. Yeah. But what that does, and I was trying to explain this before this, because you were like, oh, this is so 80s. I was like, to me, the That's not a bad thing, let no. me say. That's not a bad thing. But I reckon it, it almost feels timeless, 80s. especially with the films that they're making now, like uh, all those ones that are thrown back to the 80s, like It Follows, Drive to a certain extent, those sort of films, they want to encapsulate a feeling that this film just has. And it's it's a good, fun Slightly risky. Everything's going to be all right in the end, yeah. even though no one really likes each other. Van I know what you mean, but sometimes I don't get that when they say, "Oh, it's, oh it follows meant to be eighties." It follows nothing like. I know what no, you're, I know what no, you're, no. I know what you're saying, but this is much more of a main. This was a mainstream film. This, this is, is a this mainstream. To me, film. those sort of films are going more. With vampires. Yes, this film sits. Joel right... Schumacher. I mean, how? 
He's done shit, but how? Hats off to Joel. Whoa, 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 he's done no. a good film. Do you know what? Joel Schumacher, I know he's a bit of a joke now, but he is not a bad. He's done some What's fucking crap? spectacular Blood Creek, really Blood Creek was not a great movie. No, it wasn't awful, but you know, yes, yes, he. he <laughs> Forget he, the Batman films. He fucked Batman. Batman. I would say that Batman Forever's alright. Batman it, Forever's alright? <clears throat> Batman Forever's alright. But then, as a director, you're hired to make a film, and the film is there to make money, and he made a shit ton of money with them Batman films. So the, the executives to him is a good job, mate. Yeah, and but, all the Batman fans are going. Fuck. Yeah, but you got to. Joel Schumacher is a great director. I mean, you think of the other films here. Eight Million is dark as fuck. I actually I've really like that. it. You've Nick never Cage. seen Eight Million? No, I've never seen. Ah, oh, it's good. It's it's better than people <coughs> give credit for. Um, Flatline is a great movie. It, it's a good director. It's a good director. Let's talk about Lost Boys. So yeah, yeah, fantastic. What was it? Ninety odd minutes. Second time I've seen this, and I've got to say, I, that I fucking absolutely is a crime. It. I can't believe it's the second time I've seen it. <coughs> and like I said at the beginning, I'm bringing a lot of nostalgia in here. Yeah, the, I can see you were quoting every bloody sentence, so you must have seen this. I have, lot, I have the soundtrack. I have T-shirts. I, I, you know, the last time I watched this film was probably about six months ago. I'm not mm. gonna lie, um, but I was like, I want to watch it again. When you, because you were like, last voice, I was like, put, yeah. put that, put that shit on. I was looking at my Liz. I uh, honestly, you know, there, there are issues with this film, but I'm not there to pick them out. I, I, I can't be that. You know, there's bits where you could say, uh, no, I can't. I can't see it because I to can't. me, this film fucking rocks. It's the epitome. It's like listening to a Prince album. You know, there's so much that you shouldn't like about it, but you do like it. It's just fucking brilliant. I can't pick out a flaw. Yeah. If, if I was to be a real pickety bastard, it would be... The love interest of the mum, the main, the main vampire, the head vampire. Max, yeah, I haven't Max. changed my mind about that. <laughs> it's a great it, was, it was just a bit. I don't know. He, I haven't changed my mind about that. But then he's do, the thing I didn't like about him is a bit of a, a, a ponce. But then that's the whole purpose of him. He's not an obvious head vampire, but, I suppose. Yeah. And that's why so he sort of serves his purpose. But I, it's I, great, great, great. Younger... absolutely. You, you were I'm talking about how simple it is as a film, and I think simple, it, it, simple. It, it is. And like I mentioned earlier about the um, the dad, everything that happens in this film is there for a reason. Even the little random <coughs> throwaway bits like getting in the car, which goes nowhere, and it plays out like a joke. But actually, it's setting up the fact that there's this car. It's setting, you know, all the the fact that the house looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's setting up the fact that there's going to be wood and antlers and stuff around. Yeah. Everything that which happens in this film to moves the towards ending. it. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's some sort of undercurrent if you want to look deep at this film. A lot to do with the fact that Michael only actually becomes a vampire because of peer pressure, as much as anything else. He's forced to do things and he does them because he wants to fit in with the cool kids. Dude, now you're getting deep. This yeah, is let's get deep. Thing. And then let's also go with the fact that his brother Corey Hayne, obviously gay. Well, there's, there's posters. <laughs> obviously gay. The fact Hello. that there's a gay guy's poster hanging on a closet that he keeps hiding things in. You know, <laughs> so I'm just putting it out there. But we could get deep. Um, <laughs> you can tell he's watched it a few times. But, but you know, I I I love it. I, f- I absolutely love know, it. I absolutely fucking love the last night seven minutes watching this. Like I said, I remember it once. I told you before we watched it, a couple of snippets I remember, and you were like, "Yeah, this is this this is." And I said after this film, <clears throat> when it comes to vampire films, my pedestal is Friday Night. Oh, but they are good vampires as well. They're, they're, you know, these are proper fucking vampires. They don't, yeah. they don't, they don't, they're not rubbish. They're not girly. They're not, they're not like trying to be too clean and crisp. And they're just fucking ace. It is. I'm putting this out there. I'm saying that this is my go-to vampire movie. This is my number one vampire movie. Now it takes the number one spot over Friday Night. Five out of five. What are you giving it, Biatch? It's five. Five. It's five. 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 I, I, yeah, I, 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 I didn't want to say this before, and we didn't discuss this, and you know I didn't. Uh, <coughs> it is my go-to vampire movie as well. Um, <laughs> it, to me, is better than Fright Night, and it always has been, uh, as much as I adore Fright Night. Um, I... I don't know how much nostalgia I'm bringing to that. You know, I was, I was talking about the fact that this yeah, is the first one... the like, second time I've seen this, and I'm just going, this is outstanding. Outstanding. But I remember being a kid, and shout out to Thy Monk, who I know watches these uh, videos. Back. Uh, Thy Monk was the guy that gave me this on VHS and said, You've got to watch this when I was like 12. It had like the first proper sex scene in it that I remember actually watching. Did he give I... you that or like Porky's or David Does Dallas? <laughs> if you're watching this, Thy Monk. <laughs> um, no, it was that. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I think it's a great <coughs> film. It is my favourite <coughs> vampire movie what of a, all time. What an amazing entry from L 
in the A to Z of horror. So right, we'll be back with M. We've got some ideas. Hope you like this video. Um, yeah. Um, maniac cup. Do you know what? Yeah, maniac cup. I, I, I don't know. I've drank a lot of wine. I'm, I'm, I'm tapping out. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below, and we'll see you again soon. Peace. Peace.